Hi, and welcome to episode 3 of my KSP campaign. At the end of the last episode, the completion of our first mission into space netted us a mitt full of cash and science and reputation, and now we're going to look into what we can do with all of that. Okay, so let's see what contracts are available. Oh, I'm starting to get these VIP, Fairy of VIP. Cersei Kerman. Cersei Kerman wants to go into a suborbital flight and will pay us to do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I guess it's been demonstrated to return one person back safely and now it's time to take tourists up. <laughs> sure, fair enough. Okay, there's that. What else do we got? I gotta perform visual surveys of Kerbin. Um, yeah, that, that one is really more, I need to have a plane really to do that one effectively. See what else we have here. Uh, mm -hmm. Test the command pod on a launch site. That that will be easy enough to do. I could do that easy. I was just I just need a reason to launch. Other than that, I don't want to just put a command capsule on there. Uh, test mm -hmm. radial mm -hmm. shoots while in flight in Kerbin. I really hate these ones. I, I honestly wish Squad would get rid of these. Uh, test the flea while in flight over Kerbin. Uh, the stack decoupler in flight over Kerbin. The reason I hate these is because it, it's such a pain to hit mm -hmm. the right velocity at the right altitude. Uh, it's it's so much tweaking and working to get that to work. I, I just don't find it worth my while and worth the money that you get out of them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, um, I'm just going to ignore these ones. Let's see, that is an escape trajectory. I don't want to build something to go into an escape trajectory yet. I only want to pick up one more contract. Okay, I'll have to think about these. Let's go spend our science. We've got 77.8 science. Got aviation. Oh, that's good because I got one of those tests of flight over Kerbin. I got landing gear. Oh, there's a thought. Giving us landing gear at the same time we get the jet engines. Yes, after a bit more playing around, I decided that was the way to go. Go with aviation and go with the general rocketry to get some bigger rocket parts. All right, and now that, that gives me two more uh, upgrade points to work with with Kerbal Construction Time. Let's see here. Oh, it's going to take 22 days to research aviation. So obviously i got to put another point towards research and development. Let's see. I like this button. Every time you do it, it doubles the amount of uh, science per day. So there we go. That gets that down to 11. That's worthwhile. And I definitely need to start putting some more energy into the space plane hangar. Now that uses up all my points, but it's still going to take 34 days to uh, build that Avro 1 that you saw me testing in the last episode. The Avro 1 is that little rocket plane I was going to take to the grasslands. Well, you can buy points. You can see here for 16,000 curb bucks, I can buy another point. That ah, seems worthwhile. And 32,000 to get another point. I want to start putting these towards the space plane hangar. So let's see, another point there. That brings the build time down to 28 days. Spend another one, 24 days. Oh, heck, let's 64,000. Yeah, let's get one more point, put that towards there. That gets that down to 21 days. 128,000 for the next point. You can see it doubles every time, so that you, you quickly will run into that point of diminishing return. So I'm not going to do that. I think that's going to be it. So there we go. That still leaves me with 332,000 uh, curb bucks left, but it's not just money that I earned breaking all of those records. I also earned a fair amount of reputation. Enough, in fact, to take a look at this fundraising campaign, uh, which will take a proportion of my reputation earned and convert that into funds. And uh, I can push this up all the way to 25%, uh, which is the maximum that I can do uh, without upgrading the administration building. So I will definitely do that. Uh, that'll be a worthwhile thing. Hopefully it'll help me generate funds more quickly, help me upgrade things even quicker. Speaking of which, I think it's time to do some upgrades, and I think my first target is going to be Mission Control here. I'm going to upgrade that. This will allow me to uh, 
have a maximum of seven contracts rather than just carrying the two all the time. And that's 112,000 curb bucks. I think money well spent. And the thing to notice is that, well, with curbable construction time, this is going to take some time. 12 days, two and a half hours to be more precise, but that's okay. And then it's time to go back to the vehicle assembly building because I had decided I am going to do that VIP contract, that contract to ferry somebody up into suborbital space, do a suborbital uh, mission with them. So I'm just going to take the Kirkuri, which we just used to complete a suborbital mission that Jeb did, and then I'm just going to make some modifications to this. Uh, first of all, we're going to take out the whole science package part and replace that with another command capsule. Um, and then we're going to go down here to the bottom and upgrade our tail fins to these newer, bigger tail fins. So that means that I won't have, uh, I won't need to have so many to help me get the drag that I need to keep this thing flying straight and true. And then finally, that freed up a number of parts. So that allowed me to splurge and put on these parachutes, these radial parachutes on the first stage, which will help me to recover this stage after the mission is complete, which hopefully should save me a little bit of money. And as this thing flies pretty much the same way as you saw with the Kirkuri 1 last episode, I'm not going to bother showing you um, the simulation. Instead, what I'm going to do is just cut to pushing this into the building queue. And that after that was done, I still had enough money left over to upgrade the astronaut complex, which will be great. Uh, once this is upgraded, my Kerbals will be able to do EVAs in space, not just on Kerbin's surface. Now, it's going to take eight days, a little over eight days, for the Kirkery 2 to be built. And we will be visiting that later on in this very video. But uh, after several more days of time warping, uh, General Rocketry, the research for it, had been completed, and I thought, you know, I think I'm going to go back to the vehicle assembly building and put together something a little bit more ambitious. General Rocketry does give me some improved rocket parts. I got some uh, somewhat bigger fuel tanks. I also have the swivel engine, which, as the name implies, is gimbal and vectorable. <laughs> if that's a word, and uh, can help me steer my rocket more importantly. But what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. We're going to rename this. This is going to be the Kerstock. This is going to be a uh, completely, because it's got a different mission plan than the Kirkuri does. And one of the things that I am probably going to need now that I've gotten away with not using is, if I can find it, there it is, the heat shield. So this is my first look at the new stock heat shield because we will be dropping into the atmosphere from an orbital velocity of about 2.3 kilometers per second, quite a bit quicker than the, uh, than the Kirkuri entered into the atmosphere. Now, until I upgrade the launch pad, I am still limited to 18 tons. And until I upgrade the vehicle assembly building, I am limited to 30 parts. So that does restrict my options. One of the things I realized pretty quickly is if I'm going to get this thing into an actual orbit, not just into space, um, I'm going to have to lose the whole science bit of it. So this, it, there's going to be no science on this thing at all. Um, it's just going to be about achieving the orbit. But even with that, with those limitations, this thing did go through a respectable amount of iterations. It took a fair amount of me playing around with of uh, various configurations of, of liquid fuel and solid fuel boosters. I even uh, did a, an attempt with just nothing but solid fuel boosters. And more often than not, uh, I didn't even need to do a test flight in order to see that it wasn't going to uh, make it into an orbit because I had in my head a pretty solid number as far as the delta V that's required in order to get into an orbit. Um, and that number is around 36 hundred meters per second. That's what I found in my, I, I played a number of campaigns with Ferrum Aerospace and with ne and its, uh, its nerfed cousin Near, um, and to get used to this, a similar aerodynamic model as what we have now 
with uh, Kerbal Space Program, and always with those, it was in around 3,600 meters per second. That's what you needed in order to get in orbit, so that's what I was striving for, and if I was quite a bit below that, um, I knew that that wasn't going to work, and there wasn't even a point in trying. Uh, one of my mission, uh, one of my configurations that I did test fly that I am going to show you because I think it's neat, even though it didn't quite work and didn't get into orbit, um, was this configuration with this lovely little escape tower uh, that's built into, or that's part of the homegrown rocketry mod. I love this little escape tower designed for uh, these 1.25 meter capsules. Uh, this is a great little thing, and, and I just want to show you how it works. I, I, I do like these uh, abort systems. I, I think they're, they're good things to have on these rockets, but uh, unfortunately the part count was not going to let me do it. So in this particular simulation, a uh, combination of not quite enough delta V and uh, some control issues so that my ascent was less than desired. Uh, it should be at a higher altitude than this, hence uh, a little severe heating effects going on. But what I thought I would do is it was clear I wasn't going to get into orbit, so I thought I would test the abort system. There we go. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, that, that gives Jeb a hell of a ride, but it gets him clear of the ascent vehicle. And then uh, as he's falling, uh, all he has to do is when th there is these... Uh, little radial parachutes up there at the top and um, when they are engaged they also are kind of like a decoupler and it will detach that tower while at the same time deploying the parachute. Anyway, uh, I did eventually end up with a final uh, version of the curse stock that I put into the building queue um, that I hope will get one of my pilots into orbit, but that is going to have to be for the future. So, and I think it's gonna to have to be for our, our next episode, in fact. So right now we're gonna leave this guy and we're gonna move on to the non-simulation launch of the Kirkury 2. Yep, if things go wrong now, there's no going back. We'll just have to deal with it. You know, one of the things I do wanna show you, I wanna show you this contract plus window don't talk too much about it. What I, I like how big it is, and I like that you can hide things like this. I'm not going to go into orbit, so we'll hide that one because that has nothing to do with what we're doing. We're not going to get to 2,500 meters per second either, so I can only hide. I can highlight the uh, contracts that are relevant to what we're doing and uh, have this nice big window off to the side reminding me of my objectives, and we'll. We're going to go with Valentina to be our product. It's her turn again. Jeb went with the last one. And we're going to be adding in our crew, Cersei the Tourist. Yep. Okay, and that makes... We're, uh, we're ready to go now. All right, so here we are on the pad. Unfortunately, Valentina and Cersei look exactly the same because uh, I haven't seen any textures yet that work with the new female mono, uh, models. I'll use the Tac Fuel Balancer, but I'm just going to use the Balance All button. Uh, remember, what that does is it ends up draining fuel from all of the tanks equally, and that will help keep the center of mass from falling very, very quickly and uh, will help with control because, again, if the center of mass gets below the center of drag, uh, you're likely to have control issues. Anyway, we're set to go. We're off. Oh, and already Cersei's not looking too impressed. She's might. She looks like she's regretting this decision just a little bit. I mean, sorry, uh, lady, you're the one that put up the coin for this. You're gonna. You're along for the ride now. I'll tell you who's not impressed with this. Uh, Bill and Bob. They're not impressed at all. I mean, here we have our first uh, two-person two crew mission and uh, our second person is a tourist. I mean Bob's like come on really not a scientist our third person in space is not going to be a scientist and Bill Bill is really really annoyed because he just hates Cersei in Game of Thrones. Anyway the uh, ascent profile pretty much the same as what you saw with Kirkury 1 uh, big difference here is those bigger tail fins. This thing is much easier to control, uh, making this a much smoother flight for our 
for our tourist. We got a science alert here. Oh, we can do a crew report. Yes, that's right. This is that upper atmosphere crew report that we missed before. So we'll scoop that up. The other thing that I'm going to be doing too is I'm going to be cutting that engine once our apoapsis is a little bit over 70 kilometers. There we go. Um, I just want to get into space and get back down. Uh, I'm going to make this a little less dramatic than uh, Jeb's re-entry. So now it's just coasting up towards our apoapsis. I'm just still keeping it on the prograde vector just for aerodynamic reasons, even though the air up here is pretty thin. Let's take a look at the IVA view. Let's uh, see what Cersei sees. So this is her view. We'll take a look out the window. This is what she paid for. Uh, window's so small. Kind of makes me wish I put on the spud capsule for that lower capsule. It looked a little bit better too. It certainly couldn't have looked any dorkier than the two command capsules put on top of each other. And here's the uh, raster prop monitors. They're clearly not working. I'm not sure what's up with that. I'll have to look into that. And Cersei is freaking out once again. Valentina's certainly having a good time. Clearly she has turned off the intercom between the two, uh, two capsules so she doesn't have to listen to that wet blanket she has with her. And there goes 70 kilometers, and the contract requirement goes green. Obviously, the second part of this contract would be getting Cersei back down to the surface safely. This is uh, the real shoot window, and I really like it. It gives you a lot more control here. What I'm doing is I'm setting this shoot to pre-deploy at about 4 kilometers, and I'm copying it over to its partner shoot on the other side. And just making sure that, uh, yeah, four kilometers and then fully deployed at 700 meters gives you a lot more control. What's really nice is once you have uh, action groups enabled in the VAB, which is what you get when you upgrade the VAB, you can actually do all this stuff in the VAB ahead of time. And then you can save stuff as presets too, so you don't have to keep fiddling with them for every single mission. It's really nice. And we'll show you that later on once the VAB gets upgraded. Anyway, we'll turn this thing towards one of the normal vectors once again so that we can get rid of our first stage. There it goes. Again, putting it on the normal vector pushes that off uh, away from the plane of our trajectory so we don't have to worry about running into it once again. One thing to note about these capsules is I didn't put a heat shield on the bottom. Even though I do have a heat shield now, it's completely unnecessary. I'm not coming, you know, we're not falling into the atmosphere at any great velocity, so there's no need for a heat shield. And so it saves me a bit on cost, saves me for a part count. The other thing I don't need to do either is uh, I can now toggle off the SAS. Um, with Jeb, his capsule was a little unbalanced because of the uh, materials bay that was on it, but... Uh, here, you know, the natural shape of these capsules will keep them on the retrograde vector. So you can just turn off the SAS and just let the aerodynamics take over and don't have to do anything. Okay, G-forces are starting to creep up, getting some re-entry effects. Nothing too scary. Up to two G's, three G's, four, five. Oh yeah, and uh, science alerts telling me I can do another crew report. I'm I'm not. This must be low altitude over the water or something like that. But I'm but I'm finding out that KSB considers that lower capsule to be empty. I guess tourists can't do crew reports. All right, falling down, coming through the clouds. At least that gives us a, more of a sense of speed. I'm deploying the parachutes. Now the one thing I do want to look for is I want to keep an eye on that uh, ascent stage. I want to be able, I, I, my plan is to recover it. And with the render distance now, oh, there it is. 
just about nine kilometers away. I'm, I'm hoping you can see it. It's kind of lost in the clouds. You should be able to see it as it comes out of the clouds. Um, you know, the render distance is over 20, about 22 kilometers, so that thing is still being rendered. It's still got physics acting on it. Um, uh, and uh, I do want to recover it, get some, get some cash back. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and recover it later. All right, 40 meters to splash down, 30, 20, 10, splash down. And let's see, can we find that first stage? Can we see it there? I don't see it yet. Oh, there it is, I can see it. Coming down, it's about five kilometers away. Should be able to see it soon. There it is. Just catch the sound of the parachutes deploying. And it's down. All right, and that's going to have to end it for not just this mission, but also for this episode. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.